Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Joe Abbas. I was introduced and uh, I'm going to Taiwan. Again, I don't it, but uh, I really don't know what to talk about, but I am uh, 15 years old. I go right back there to McGregor and uh, I am very excited to go to Taiwan, uh, try their food, try their interesting floor toilets. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I enjoy playing games uh, as most kids do nowadays. I like science and uh, yeah. And hmm, let's probably talk about Taiwan a bit. But in Taiwan, they have these really nice foods. Uh, a lot of things have been told have tiny fish in them. So things like rice, tiny fish. And uh, yeah, I don't like seafood much, so I'm gonna have to get used to that. But uh, yeah, so I'll be trying that a bunch. And uh, as I said, they have toilets on the floor. That's a fun detail. Uh, garbage trucks, I know, play ice cream truck music, and you have to walk the garbage out there. But the baths on the floor, I mean, uh, just like in Europe, there's no toilets, you just stand. And... So you have to practice your Asian squats, is what they call it. You have to squat down like this, the toilet's right here. <laughs> Sometimes the toilet paper's outside of the stall, which is great fun. And you can't flush it down there, you have to put it in the garbage. Beside. So, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, come on. You got to your family and your brothers and sisters? Uh, I'm a only child, live with my mom in, on the other side of Chatham. And uh, it was like six years ago, my father died of cancer, uh, sadly. And uh, there was a bit of irony to that. It was on Father's Day. So, real sad day there, but God passed it. And uh, we have been, we've been, we moved to Chatham about four or five years ago, I think now. And uh, I've been happily here ever since. And uh, yeah, I just got into high school two years ago. And I've uh, been trying to get through that bit of my life. How did you learn so far about Taiwan? Uh, what I've said about how big said pay. I believe, uh, here's a fun fact that I learned. I was doing math for my slideshow, and you can fit 29.75 Taiwans into Ontario alone. So it is about 140 square miles, while Ontario is about 1 million or something. And uh, yeah. So, sorry, I missed that figure. The area? I think it's 140, maybe about 40 square miles, something like that. I mean, small than Ontario. Is that right? Yeah, it's a 29 times smaller than Ontario. What's the population? Well, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the population. I believe is quite dense for the area. It's the path that of Ontario, I think. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's around there. A few million or something. Yeah. Okay, why, why did you choose to go? Why? Oh, <laughs> that, that's great. <laughs> that's it. Thanks for giving me the good <laughs> stuff. Uh, what was it now? Three, two, two, three years ago, 2019. So three years ago, I think. I uh, was hosting a exchange student named Ian from Taiwan, and he was um, my introduction to Rotary, introduction to the exchange program, and my introduction to Taiwan. So that's uh, why I'm going. He taught me about the culture a bit, and that's no reason. If that's all I have to try to pick up the language at all, the part of the idea to try to pick up the language. Yeah, we try and pick it up a bit beforehand with the homework assignments that we've been given. And uh, I know that many of the exchange students, the road techs, have said that it is really helpful when you first get there, but it'll get, when you're there and immersed in it, it is easier to pick it up than what we're doing here. You said you were going to give more of the experience. Well, I can give a bit of it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Might mess up a bit, haven't said in a bit, but uh, yeah. oh, say it confidently, okay. Uh, ni hao, what do you mean, sister? Like there, but um, what should Jin Narakan a rotary? 
Wo Shishu Wo Ganki Bye. Missed a few words, but <laughs> so I believe you all understood Rotary. That's yeah. good. that's a good sign. Uh, uh, it means hello. My name is Caleb. I'm from Canada, and Rotary. That's rough translation. Uh, says I. I'm a uh, 15. I believe the number I chose. <laughs> then I missed a word there, but I put I like playing the piano because I do that in my spare time. I'm pretty bad at it, <laughs> but I try. So, no. Well, very good. Yeah, let's see if anybody has questions. Andy always has a question about Taiwan or something. Don't know anything about Taiwan. I give you an example, though. My son went to Norway, and one of the nicest letters you ever got from Norway was from his counselor. He went in August, and in December, we got a letter from his counselor that said, You can consider that your son is now fluent. In Norwegian. So that's a challenge. So by, by Christmas, you should be fluent in whatever language you're going to learn. They're putting the pressure on me now, are you? Well, it can be done. Anything else? Karen. Speaking of exchange students, I was going to bring this up under after thoughts, but um, I was down the basement the other day and I noticed this little card underneath the glass top of our desk. And I hadn't you know, paid any attention to it for a while. So I thought, Brad was talking about you know, getting together with his exchange student recently. So I went on Facebook and I wrote, hi Cecil, I wanted to reach out to see if you were the same Cecil that lived with us in Canada when you were a Rotary Exchange student back almost 30 years ago. I found your photo the other day and was wondering how you were doing, so thought I'd take a chance and see if you were on Facebook. That was at 7.13 a.m. on June the 2nd. At 7.56 a.m., I get this reply. Hi, Karen. Yes, it's me. How wonderful you contacted me. I think about you guys now and then, and I have been wondering how you were doing. How's Wendy? Are you still living in Chatham? I live in Copenhagen now with my husband and two daughters, nine and 12, and we are doing well. I finished an education as a physical therapist way back in 2000, but I'm now working as an HR specialist, which I enjoy very much. Are you still in the Rotary community? Tell everyone I said hi. Oh, Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> you never lose the connection. I think it's the moral of that story. I know we still get Mother's Day cards, Christmas cards, and such from you. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going you're to come back when you get back and tell us about Taiwan, right? For sure. Well, just as a little thank you for doing a nice impromptu little. Uh, speech for us and let us know about your program. We put a book in the library for you. So if you could just sign I will take that back to the and we'll get pictures. Um, Jennifer has some kind of it's purple. It's a long one. Okay. Um, speaking of which I had asked Jennifer to do her updates, but we didn't do the happy notes. Before I have Peter do his updates about his updates about the um, our Guatemala project. Does anybody have any half notes for today? She never missed that on a chance for half notes. Anybody? No? Okay, I can't think of anything right now myself. So I'll just move along. Okay. Uh, so Peter, do you want to update us on some things for the project? Sure. All right, great. Okay. I'll I'll do it here so I can control the computers. And we have Barry uh, Fraser and Donna um, on Zoom. And I will, hopefully this will work. Uh, 
Okay. Um, now, this is an update for um, three different projects. Uh, our club has contributed $15,000 Canadian to each of three projects, a water project and two Rachel projects. Um, and so it's only natural that you guys ought to know you've got a lot of skin in the game. It's $15,000 Canadian, that triggered district money, which then triggered Rotary International money. Um, so our club is, is highly um, invested in these three projects. Um, and I gave this talk yesterday to, to the Blenheim Club. And there was, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, please ask questions during the, the talk because I'm going to go from one to the other and it's better to do it that way. And they did. Uh, normally, when you tell people to ask questions, they don't, but they, they really did. The talk went on for about an hour. So if we go on really long, you have to go off somewhere. Uh, don't worry, I won't be insulted. Um, okay. So in the previous episode, um, well, right at the beginning, uh, after our sort of discussions with, with uh, Jennifer Jacobson and Barry Fraser, we decided we were going to do uh, an international project piggybacking on another project in, in, from one of the clubs in our district. It was just before Barry became a district governor. Um, and and uh, so we decided to help uh, the village where the Eastmans um, of the Rochester Club have their medical clinic. Um, I, I'm sure you all, most of you will remember back to then, those who were here at that time. The planning for that started in 2016. It was approved by 2018. Water project meeting, water collection, water storage, water distribution, latrines, and sewage treatment for a village that had, as you know, Tanya, because you were there, um, <clears throat> that has nothing. Um, and anyway, that project is now completed. Uh, this is so you know, I should use this so uh, Barry and Donna can see where we were. Okay, this is this area down here in Guatemala, Guatemala City, Antigua. This is where uh, there are a lot of middle-class people, where the money is, where most of the rotary projects are. The Northwest and the Northeast tend to be ignored um, by the governments, by, by everybody. Um, and the Eastman's Project um, Medical Clinic, Casa Calibri, is this is about right here, and that's where that project was. Um, and anyway, you remember the story that uh, I, I visited that place to, to sort of check out the village because I was uh, doing a Spanish course anyway in Antigua, Guatemala. And I, I met with a rotary, uh, I went to a rotary meeting there, and they said this water project's all well and good, but what we really would like is a Rachel project. And are you familiar with Rachel? And I pulled out the Raspberry Pi from my pocket and said like this. And um, that Raspberry Pi has Rachel on it. That computer is attached to that Raspberry Pi. So if anybody wants to play with Rachel afterwards, feel free. Um, anyway, and that started a relationship with this club. I mean, the cool thing about Rotary is you really get to know people really well in, in different countries. Um, and since then, I've been working extremely closely with Abdulia Herrera, who gave a talk uh, to our club. Uh, a couple of years ago. We, the planning started in 2017, that's which is when I visited. Uh, the project was approved as a global grant in 2018, um, and the year one rollout was in 2019, year two rollout in 2020. Uh, and we just did the final rollout um, April, the week of April 18th of this year. Um, and since that was going so well, and since I thought lots of people would like to visit Tikal, which is a big archeological site in Guatemala, I thought, why don't we do a project in Northeast Guatemala? Um, uh, and so I started talking to them in 2020, 2019, 2020. Um, project was approved in 2021, and I'm gonna give you lots of details of that one. Whoops. Now, back to the, okay, that was just the overview, the three projects that we're, I'm gonna be talking about. Getting, going back now to the water project. Tanya, you will remember, oops, uh, again, I'll point with the, the thing here. So Donna and this, uh, on the left side here, when you saw it, it was just a tiny trickle of water coming out of this, um, it's a spring. Um, this water project had all kinds of setbacks. Um, the water, there was a water source for the village, but the next village over, you served it violently and leaving these, this village Eastman's village without water. 
Um, <clears throat> things are tough there. Uh, I mean, as I explained before, most of these people have been refugees in Mexico during the 30 year long Guatemalan Civil War to avoid being massacred. Um, and when they came back, they sort of settled in various villages semi legally uh, in northern Guatemala. And uh, because there are 25 different Mayan languages, your village might not be able to speak to the village beside it. Um, oh, by the way, um, I'll, so this is the final report from the water. I have to look through it in Spanish, but it's got lots of pretty pictures at the back. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so the, the, they lost their main water source. Then they lost, uh, they had agreed to buy a water source from somebody that would live about a kilometer away. Then he reneged on that agreement. Um, that's all written up in Spanish in the final report. So eventually they decided to basically do rainwater collection and turn their own spring, which is pretty pitiful at certain times of year, into, uh, that's a before and after picture. So it's a reservoir that they've turned that into with pumps. Um, and they put, I think they're 5,000 liter reservoirs for each family. So each family has one of these uh, uh, reservoirs. And uh, as you see, the latest in modern latrine on the right side. Um, and also all the children have gone through a course on water and sanitation on the left side. And on the right side, what you see is the, um, uh, they've selected sort of mechanically oriented um, villagers who have been taught how to manage the pumps and the whole system, the sanitation system, et cetera. There's a massive big sort of joint uh, septic tank for, for the village. Um, to try to avoid. There is a lagoon there, which where the water is so polluted it can't be used, but hopefully over time that, that will improve. So you said each family had one of those? Yeah, one of these. How many each? Sorry? How many each? You said each family. There are about 40 families, 45 40 families. Um, and now you will see the massive difference. I mean, you could hardly imagine a site like that, kids brushing your teeth. I mean, what we saw was kids with jugs of water on their head or a, a two liter pop bottle with water being taken back to the house. So this, what you're seeing here um, in that context is miraculous. For us, it's nothing, but for them, it's miraculous. Uh, Okay, so that's basically the update on the water project. Any questions on that before I move on? It's now finished, except for the final report. The work is done. Yeah. Where does the water go now? Into a, a massive, they've got this massive big uh, septic tank that's a little bit, it's not far from where the laundry thing was. Oh, uh, well, the laundry thing's also been, yeah. I think there's a picture of that in there. It's all been redone. Um, and uh, then I assume it's, it must be a weeping bed. So that was why the lake was, you know, you know, all the water ran off from their laundry and everything into that, and it's basically. Okay, so Rachel, I mean, I hope you're not sick of me talking about Rachel systems because I've done it so many times. That's the big Rachel, and that's a little Rachel, a Raspberry Pi version. Um, as I mentioned, Okay, Rachel stands for a remote area community hotspot for education and learning. Um, whether it's the big one or the little one, it is a digital Wi-Fi hotspot with, a, on the big one, a terabyte of information. Little one, first time I showed you, it had 32 gigabytes and it's the same unit, but I now have a 256 gigabyte card in it. Um, and they weren't designed for 256 gigabytes, but they work. Um, that's a seven-year-old Raspberry Pi. You can't buy Raspberry Pis today because of the supply chain issues. Um, and there's an English, Spanish, and French version. Um, and as, as you know, I've just told you many times, it's, it contains books, videos, and exercises, um, uh, Wikipedia, textbooks, medical encyclopedias, health guides. It's what... It's, it really is worth it um, with that machine, the Chromebook over there. That's exactly the type of computers we provide the schools. Um, I got that one refurbished 
Uh, and just to go through the number of different things, like there's 10 different library book libraries, and then there's um, several different medical encyclopedias or medical sources, and there's, it just goes on and on and on. It's a huge amount of information. And this is, we're putting these in schools that have no internet connection, no cell phone signal, no nothing. And in each school, uh, each school must send five teachers for training. So it's a half day of training. And I've told you about this before. Here, these are the two teachers from the Nuevo Eden, from the same village where we put the water system. And they are, um, at the end of the class, there's the question, how does the baby breathe in the womb? And these are the teachers who uh, are making, they're, they're really enjoying it. They're, they're, it's, it's, anybody who's watched these sessions are really impressed with how the teachers enjoy what they're learning. Um, but they, they uh, have taken the poster paper that they were supposed to describe how a baby breathes in the womb, but instead of wrapped it up and made an umbilical cord to demonstrate how a baby breathes in the womb. Um, okay, so Boreas, uh, again, if I point with my finger, then Barry can't see very, uh, where we were to do. Uh, we've, some of the, 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 basically this whole area uh, in, in, in circle in red is, is the municipality. Most of it's the municipality of Boreas and some of it's Saloma. We, we did put some systems there because one of the participants, the American participants, is trying to get Saloma basically set up a, a rotary club there um, and sort of demonstrating its value. Now, way over here is this lake. It's, um, it's going to become important in a second. Flores, Peyton. Flores is the capital of Peyton. This whole big block up here beside Belize is the uh, department like a province of Peyton. Um, not a lot of people in that area. It's, it's like 600,000. Um, so it's very relatively unpopulated. It's filled with um, Mayan uh, pyramids and, and that sort of thing, uh, many of which are not covered. Um, I mean, they not, have not been uncovered. Um, anyway, getting back to what I'm supposed to be talking about, the Boreas overview. We're fin we've now finished up the three years, so the, the second project is essentially done. Um, again, we have to do the final report this summer. We did uh, 14 schools the first year. We did laptops and tablets the first year, but during our visit, we decided the tablets really weren't worth it, um, and we put more effort into laptops. We got um, uh, the price of laptops went down and we bought a lot more laptops sub subsequently. And then this year, um, we bought 290 laptops. We just used up the rest of the budget for laptops and um, distributed extra laptops to the year one and year two schools. So at the end of it, 52 schools have received racial assistance and 600 laptops. Uh, total budget was around 130, 135,000 US. Okay, any questions on the Boreas one? Because now that's over, that's the last we're gonna hear about it. Um, okay, except I'm gonna show you a few photos in the Boreas. So, uh, I wasn't there for the rollout. Uh, nobody from North America was there for the rollout. Um, but what's important um, is the teaching of the teachers. So that always starts with teaching of teachers. And there are um, two sets of teachers describing how does a baby breathe in the womb? If you look at it closely, you'll see that that's what it's saying. Um, really important thing, uh, these are servers that can be updated. So the year one and the year two, Rachel's were brought in to the town of Berea's uh, so that we could update them to the 2022 version. Um, and um, in the future, we'll be able to send a memory stick, one terabyte memory stick, uh, to the uh, Berea's club, and they know what to do. Um, and th it's really interesting seeing how a Rotary Club works. Um, all the guys in blue shirts here, they're all the Rotary Club guys. They were, they were going around to the schools, delivering the equipment, setting up the equipment, and showing the kids how to use the equipment and enjoying it thoroughly. So all the, 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 the buy-in, uh, the involvement of the Rotary Club, there's only a dozen members of this club. And yet 
Um, they're all taking time off work during the day to, to, to do this. They also, also organize the training at the beginning. They you have to be there for registration, serving lunch, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Um, so a huge amount of participation uh, by the Rotary Club members um, and an and enthusiasm by the Rotary Club members uh, to make the project work. And then they go back every once in a while to see that, make sure that, as we found out, to make sure that the um, systems are being used properly. And you'll notice the celebratory aspect of, of receiving the, the equipment, the balloons, um, uh, the, uh, the ribbons, um, there were speeches, there was national anthems, prayers. Uh, okay, so that's, that's Berea's um, project number two, finished. Um, well, finished only in the sense that it's, it's been done from Rotary's point of view, but it'll keep on going. The, the systems are, uh, will continue to be used. We will continue to update them. Uh, just doesn't require any budget. Uh, there are a few people in Abdulio's club who would like to do a smaller project to continue on and have a few more schools. Okay, project number three, um, pay 10. Um, la largest, physically the largest department in Guatemala, uh, remote. Roads are better than, than Berea, so you'll be pleased to know. Um, it also has an airport. Uh, an airport about uh, smaller, smaller than London, so it's the second biggest airport in Guatemala. Um, and but you quite inexpensively can fly to Guatemala City. So you, um, if we do another trip, we might fly fly home. I think that's what I was thinking. Um, project preparation took two years. Now. Lusani Contreras, whose picture you'll see in a moment, is the person I've been working with uh, in, in Peyton. She had a very different approach than in, in uh, Berrias. And that's the important aspect of Rotary. We're not running these projects. They're running the projects. It's, it's not old white guys uh, from rich countries running the projects. It's local people running the projects. And that is so, to me, so incredibly important. Um, yeah, we do or organizing and raising money and stuff like that, but they figure out how to do it. And her idea was to bring, get the municipalities highly involved. Um, yeah, um, to do. You see there Flores, that's actually a tiny little island in the lake. And the white area around is San Benito, down here is San Francisco, um, San Andres, and La Libertad, five different municipalities, five different municipal governments, all of whom sign an MOU with us um, because all of them will hire two facilitators to do the girl empowerment work, which I'll talk about in a second, all of whom uh, have agreed to do whatever funding is needed so that each school can have a dedicated lockable classroom with power, multiple power outlets. Um, and all of whom are enthusiastically behind the project. You can't sort of do this under, under the wire. You've, you've got to get the uh, municipal municipalities involved. So what we did this year um, was the first 16 schools. We're gonna do 19 next year, 19 the year after. Um, we just did the three municipalities. We'll add two more municipalities next year. Um, and uh, we, um, did the teacher training the week of May 2nd. Most of you have seen the photos from that because I was there for that. Um, actually, one other thing I sh should be mentioning that's really important. Um, see this lake here. Uh, it has pollution issues like most lakes, um, particularly in developing countries. And so one of uh, Lucani's ideas was to get a little Okay, it's a, it's a server. You can put more stuff on it um, and get uh, a local organization called Hunil Ha to uh, pre prepare educational material um, on watershed management, environmental management. Um, and then the, the, the volunteers from that organization are going to go around to the schools teaching that. And then we were dealing with uh, IU Beasley and a vision for clean water, and they're actually putting, they agreed to put in a couple thousand dollars where Hunil Hall will take the material from the Center for Advanced 
water sanitation and technology in Calgary. Uh, who are the world leaders in, in developing country water and sanitation education? They will, they are going to take that material in Spanish and create 10 workshops, 10 classes basically, and one a month go around to the schools teaching that material and they'll have the, the background resource material on the Rachel system. And then, thirdly, Sarah Nina, um, you, Danielle, at the far, um, Far left, uh, you has talked, spoken to the club. Um, she's a she <coughs> set up Serenina in Antigua when she was a teacher there for six years. And it's a girl, well, um, <coughs> girl empowerment, uh, self esteem, uh, sort of character building exercises for both girls and boys. Um, that, that she has set up, an organization that she has set up. She's back in Canada now. Um, but <clears throat> this is just a, a screenshot from uh, Rachel. And you'll see the Serenidia thing here. And it says, this link, uh, oops, just a second. This link, we will uh, find a series of resources for the em empowerment of girls and boys um, that comes from the Sierra Nina organization. And uh, the, ob the object is to guide and inspire girls of Guatemala um, for, to develop uh, a strong feeling of identity, uh, self-esteem, uh, self-value. Uh, self um, my translating isn't the great, and help with the development of, of uh, um, abilities and knowledge uh, as, uh, for being uh, in, in their roles, girls and, and boys, um, and the, so that they both feel empowered, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so <clears throat> this is a module that they have put together. Uh, we have sponsored that. We've actually paid the money to do that. It actually has, the Revista means magazine. It has a sort of kind of like a magazine for each week. Um, of, of the course and uh, e extra exercises um, when you go through that, it's all, all there uh, in the system. Um, <clears throat> so this is the cool part where the municipalities have each engaged two facilitators. Um, and so at this point with three municipalities, there should have been six people at the uh, one week long course for the facilitators that happened May 24th. Um, but because the hospital psychologists were interested in what was going on, some of the municipalities hired extra facilitators because they had more schools and ended up being 10 or 18 people take the course. Um, and these people are then going to be responsible for teaching this material to this, the kids. And we, we're dealing with an area where 30% of the teenage pregnancies are due to incest. Um, and uh, and teenage pregnancy is extremely common. Uh, you go into a chicken, you know, chicken bus, uh, and you see a lot of girls like 18, 19, 17, who are pregnant. Um, and these are the three people I work with most. Um, on the left is Lusani Maharas, the person I've dealt with most. Her sister is in the middle. Um, and on the right is Flora, who's a dentist. Next year, okay, we've just done year one. Um, next, uh, the rollout isn't completely done yet because we're short of the big Rachel systems due to the supply issues. They've now arrived in Antigua, they have to be shipped to grade 10. They will hopefully by the end of the month, all the, the 16 schools will have received their Rachels and their computers. Um, in July, they're going to revisit the, each of the schools um, to make sure that the stuff is being used properly and correctly and answer any questions. Um, in August, sep September, um, they're going to visit 19 more schools, at least 19 more schools, to select 19 schools for next year's project. Um, do they have laptops already? If they do, they can still be part of it, but. Uh, it just means we'll have more laptops for other schools. Uh, will they prepare a secure computer room? If the answer is no, well, they're out of it. Uh, are they enthusiastic? No, no point. 
On October, by October, we hope to have signed agreements uh, with each of the schools. Um, and what we got, just to get the project going, we've had 25 signed, over 25 signed agreements with municipalities and schools and other organizations. Um, in November, we'll order the equipment. There's another Rotary group, uh, a guy in um, Vancouver Island, who is sourced uh, refurbished Chromebooks. Because these Chromebooks, um, like the one over there, four uh, gigabytes RAMs, 32 gigabytes uh, solid state drive, which is, in today's standards, is tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, in fact, the that don't know if they still make them that small, but these there are an awful lot of refurbished you know, companies that are taking them in, and, and so you can get large numbers of uh, refurbished uh, Chromebooks that are the same model. You don't want them to end up with a, a laptop zoo. You want every you want a, a set of consistent laptops so it's easy to teach, easy to maintain. Anyway, this guy's uh, been sourcing them. Uh, the, Guy I work with on organizing this project from Dick Carver, Washington, um, is trying to is actually talking to the American military to ship them down to uh, Guatemala. And we're talking fifty dollars a computer, rather than one hundred and fifty. If so, we're hoping that if we can get them into Guatemala in good shape for hundred dollars, then instead of buying two hundred computers next year, we'll be buying three hundred. Um, and we have a big meeting on this tomorrow evening at uh, 6 p.m. And we have a committee meeting on this project today at 5 p.m. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> November, we're going to, we might may end up deciding earlier about the, the, uh, the November, about the equipment we're ordering, depending on how that works out. And then February 2023, will be the uh, rollout and then repeat the whole thing again for 2024. Now we are looking at the idea of a group visit to um, Guatemala. My daughter sent me something that came from uh, uh, a company she used to work for that provides for um, health uh, and, and, and security support for companies doing work in developing countries. And if you read the Guatemala description, you would never in your right mind go there because it describes all the dangers of Guatemala, um, which are I'll sum up. But uh, if you avoided all danger, life wouldn't be very interesting. Um, so we're looking at next March as a potential date for a visit of, of Rotarians tire kicking tour. Uh, and, and that would visit all, all three of these projects. Um, I, oh, not quite. I've had, you've got to see the photos. Um, photos for the Pay 10 rollout. Each municipality, okay, there are three training sessions for teachers, one in each of the municipalities. Um, as you can see, a very open air room here. And of course, oh, there's Floor. Floor took the course. Uh, and the municipality provided lunch, and that's. Um, Lusani's husband serving out the lunches. Um, municipalities provided the, the space for the course. And of course, the mayor had to come and give us his words of wisdom with his uh, lackeys photographing it all for the press. So there's an awful lot of press coverage of the, the show. Um, and mayor spoke for five minutes. Up. <clears throat> uh, and then of course, the Students were answering that question. How does a baby breathe in the womb? And you can see doing the research uh, using Wikipedia. Um, and then in the afternoon, each day was similar. Of course, in the morning, municipality visit a school or two in the afternoon and you know, dedicated computacion room and the uh, cutting of the ribbon to officially open that. And uh, Lusani and I are cutting it. And, and then of course you have bright eyed, cheery, kids uh, being introduced to uh, the, the, the technology and the computers. And again, importantly, the people, um, uh, Rotarians who, who understand what's going on and are helping the kids with it. Um, and as I mentioned, every class that they set up has to have a power up that reaches the laptop. So, um, 
And there's always a celebration with flags and national anthems and the Guatemalan national anthem goes on and on and on and on. And that's actually Lusani's daughter who was showing a kid how to use it. And some of the couple of kids had smartphones. And if you look carefully on the smartphone, you will see that Rachel is, um, we've got them with Rachel. And of course they can grab a book and take it home and read it on the smartphone. Um, pay 10 area and, and the various areas are very different. Uh, Barrios is much more indigenous, Peitan is less so, so the parents speak Spanish in, in the Peitan area, the parents do not in general in the Barrios area. The climate is totally different, mid-20s temperature in Barrios, mid-30s to 40 temperatures in Peitan, which is not, and humid, which is not particularly comfortable. Um, another, uh, in this case, it's Lusani's daughter cutting the ribbon and more cute kids. Um, oh, and this is the teaching of the facilitators for the Girl Empowerment course, uh, which included lots of, I don't know very much about this, but pe people who are involved in this sort of thing, they, they you know, describe aspects of, of family. And so they're um, playing with ideas, playing with thoughts, and it's all sort of self-empowerment exercises that they do, and that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Oh no no no! It's uh, it's hard to say because I, I'm guessing it's probably like fifty by five, fifty kilometers by five kilometers. That's, that's a wild guess. Because um, the dis if I can go back to a map, there we are. Going from southern Antigua up to Pei Ten, if when like you set it up in ways, I don't know, really with the GPS thing, it first tells you the distance as the crow flies, and it's like 250 kilometers. Then it then it's a then it tells you the distance by road. Once it's figured out the route, 500 kilometers, so sort of 400, yeah, 500, and then the number of hours, 10 hours to do that. Um, so one's perception of distance is so different because it takes so long. Uh, to get anywhere, um, and it's okay. We took a boat from Flores to uh, San Andres. Um, five, about ten minutes. It's nothing, nothing like Lake Erie, and you can easily see the other side. Any other questions? Oops, we lost Barry. Oh no. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, one last thing just before we close up. I had promised Ashley about a month ago that um, she had done her classification back when we were still shut down with COVID and she never got to have her book. Um, put into the library course. So I asked my staff to pick an extra special look, and we did, and as I am able to shine, and Ashley certainly does. So it is all written for you, and we'll get some pictures afterwards, okay? And I also brought my um, diversity award, actually. So I think I'm officially getting that again next year. But we'll do our pictures today, actually. Okay. So um, next week, just a reminder, it's, it's, uh, it's all about Jennifer. Well, no, it's all about strategic planning. What is it we want to do in the next year or two? It'll be me after that. So please come with your ideas, your thoughts, your input. It's uh, greatly valued. And if there's nothing else, we're going to go to you. Yeah. If anybody wants to ask any questions about what I say. Yes, yes. We have the uh, flyer. And if anybody wants to actually look through quickly the road of the Rachel system, I can show them. Get you logged on. It's easy, easy. Online is easy. Well, yeah. either on your phone or, or it's easier to see it on the Chromebook that's over there. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd rather have a bad walk.
Thank you. Thanks very much.